we can see more than 10, but maybe 20, I don't know how, how many, corpses lying down on the ground, two or three meters apart. And that bullet went mm -hmm. in from here and come out from here, so this part is blowing away. And those corpses was wearing this prison uniform. Nineteen ninety five. That was a summer day. Who is going to do what uh, surgery was managed by our chief surgeon? And I have I had two chief surgeons. So on that Tuesday afternoon, and one of them they called me into his office. And I said, uh, I know you are free tomorrow because I was the only one who didn't have uh, scheduled surgery. And he said, and ask for two nurses and um, ask for, go to that uh, anesthesia department and ask for assistant. And uh, waiting for me next day morning, 9.30 at the uh, hospital gate. Then next uh, 9.30, they appeared uh, in the car. And shouting at her said, follow us. And we said, yes, follow you. So we jumped in the van, we started following them. I asked this driver, where are we going? because I have never been to that part of the world. And he said, this is the way, go to the Western Mountain execution ground. Oh my God, I was so scared. It's really freaked out. What are we doing in the execution ground? By that time, the tension between this minority and Han Chinese and his government is, uh, can be seen in the society. So somehow I thought, are they going to shoot me because I'm a minority? By the time uh, we arrived, there's a hill. Western Mountain District, as the name suggests, it is inside the mountains everywhere, it's mountains, hills. Our two chief surgeon was waiting for us. and. Uh, we arrived and he said, you wait here and come around when you hear gunshots. And I said, okay, at least they are not going to shoot me because I'm going to wait here. Well, since we are all young, inexperienced in such situation, especially those two nurses, they scared. They said, what's what going to happen? Why we're here? Then we started hearing that uh, noise from the, behind the hill. Uh, truck noise, engine noise, people's noise, and somebody is shouting, and the people chanting, and the whistle is blowing. Then we heard gunshots. The gunshot is not like a uh, machine gun shooting. It's like many rifles shoot at the same time. So we went in. On the left side, at the slope of the mountains, we can see more than 10, but maybe 20, I don't know how, how many. Uh, corpse lying down on the ground, two or three meters apart. Everyone was shaved like me, and that bullet 
went mm. in from here and come out from here, so this part is blowing away. And those corpse was wearing this prison uniform. You know, in China, all medical students during schooling at university, they have seen a lot of corpse. Not like the West, they don't use real corpse. We use, we seen lots, lot of dead bodies and uh, dismantled uh, body parts. So we are not scared of, uh, when, when we see that. Then there was a police officer shouting at us, said, go to the far right, the last one is yours. Then our two chief surgeon was standing there and there was a body lying down there with civilian's uniform, with long hair, it was a man. And the chief surgeon called me and said, you come here. And then told others to put this body into the one. And he told me, no, this is what you are going to do. Do as quick as possible, remove liver and kidney. I actually felt so much relieved. And that is, if that is the things they're asking me to do, that is nothing. I can do it straight away, no problem. And my old fear, panic has gone because I thought they're going to shoot me. From that moment, my body actually turned into like robot, like trained or programmed the robot to carry out that uh, following the program. So by the time I got into the one, they have prepared the body already. So I took the scalp and then my chief surgeon standing next to me on my left. On my right is my, one of my um, nurse and the two uh, assistants standing opposite me. So I started cutting straight away. When my scalp cut his, you know, just from here, and the, the body tried to, you know, struggling and doing this, but he was shot to the right chest. And he was too weak to resist my insertion. My chief surgeon said, quick, be quick, hurry up. So I started cutting it. Then I saw blood, it was bleeding. And I said, this man is alive. Because the heart was still pumping the blood. Anyway, um, since uh, I was told what to do, my only choice is to follow the uh, order. I took uh, liver out, both kidney out, and the chief surgeon put them in a box and said, now you take your team back to the hospital. Remember today, nothing happened today, right? I lived in a Chinese communist this society and I know what does that mean? That means if you say anything, you are in trouble. And that is big trouble. So from that day on, none of us has ever talked about it. Was organ harvesting legal in China? Yes. It's not only legal, it is encouraged. As Chinese government says that that should come from voluntarily donation. That's a lie. And the Chinese government also says it's come from executed and prisoner. Well, Chinese government, they, they published that uh, number of executed, execution, it's around 10,000. 
but the transplantation organs, it is much higher than UK, for example, registered donor is 24 million. Against the UK population is one third or one fourth. Based on such large uh, size of do uh, donation, people, size, in UK, you need to wait for two years for one pair of lungs. In China, they can get a pair of lungs in 15 days. It was kicked out, uh, kicked started by my chief surgeon's uh, joke. He was saying and telling me that, uh, uh, say, look at our department. We only have 40 beds, and uh, 10 of them occupied by your people, it means minorities. And the rest 30 occupied by the Han Chinese. Among those 160,000, there are only 5,000 there were minorities. So now try to calculate. 5,000, they got occupied 10 beds, and 155,000 occupied 30 beds. So that tells you just in the amount of minority, there are too many cancer patients. Among so large popul um, population size Han Chinese, they only need a few beds. So I spent two years and I looked through uh, around 2,000 cases. Uh, then I got a, a, a result is that uh, the cancers on the top of the list was leukemia and uh, lung cancer and uh, thyroid cancer and uh, malignant lymphoma. Then I, come, I went back to the medical textbook and tried to see what is in common. And uh, I found that uh, those four types of cancer, if it, in, it is in raise, uh, raising in a certain place, then you should immediately look for radiation. And uh, we all know uh, that um, uh, our great country uh, is testing atom bomb to against uh, American imperialist. So we all know that. So uh, they are testing uh, atom bomb in Xinjiang. So that's how I made a uh, connection to the uh, cancer patient with radiation. There are three large size that uh, uranium mine also located in Xinjiang. One of them was uh, also contributed to former Soviet Union's uh, nuclear test program in 1940. And that uranium also is in Xinjiang. So from that, I, uh, I understood that uh, uh, people in Xinjiang has been uh, victim of uh, nuclear test. And they don't hide and they are doing a nuclear test because every single nuclear test, you will see they reported on the newspaper said, our great country, we have successfully conducted another nuclear test. There's a documentary film made by the Chinese government. In that film, they show you that uh, uh, the nuclear test doesn't harm the animals, the crops. And I say, if it doesn't harm the animals, why do you test it? It means you don't harm the human being. So why do you need it? You test the nuclear bomb is, is to kill. What did you feel like when you realized the scale of the cancer problem uh, in Xinjiang? Feeling just hopeless. I don't have and uh, feeling this. I don't have strength. Uh, don't have power to help those people. 
in Xinjiang, and um, one session of chemotherapy, it costs um, around one thousand dollars, which is eight thousand yuan in Chinese currency. The problem with these people in Xinjiang, peasants, farmers, the yearly income is barely ten thousand yuan. They just can't afford that. When they have been diagnosed with that cancer, they just go home because they can't afford it. So what did you decide to do about all of that? Um, I told you uh, already that uh, I have uh, investigated 2,000 cases and I got a uh, result that uh, the cancer patient was a uh, result of the nuclear test radiation. Then in uh, 2000, uh, no, it's 1996, um, <clears throat> there was a promotion test uh, examination. Uh, I failed in the foreign language. So by that time, I'm already is fed up with working with just um, Chinese colleagues, with this system with this society because there are so many things uh, happen. So I asked um, permission, I said, can I have a uh, sabbatical leave and uh, I'm going to study one foreign language and come back to take this examination again. So I got a uh, one year leave. So I straight come to um, Turkey and what happened is that um, we have a, a national center in Istanbul. They are helping these Uyghurs, uh, just refugees, just uh, diasporas. They contacted me and they said, there, there are two journalists from London. Uh, they want to know the health situation in Xinjiang. Would you like to be interviewed? I said, yes, why not? They contact back to London and uh, they decided to make a film. So they asked me, if we want to make a, a film, would you like to be uh, our guide? I said, sure, yes. Because I had that idea. I wanted to tell this world about that. So five of us, we went back to Xinjiang. We spent six weeks, we filmed just uh, victims and uh, children. Because the radiation, when this atom bomb exploded and when you were pregnant, the child was li likely to be born with uh, deformity. But if you were born already, then you are like, likely to develop a cancer. And we also, we chopped down a tree in the mountain and we sent that piece of tree uh, wood through British Embassy to London and then to examining it. And uh, we were waiting for the result because we had done everything. Then the result came and said, yes, you." you got the hard evidence, then we left. The hard evidence is inside that tree, the radiation dosage is 300 times higher than the tree in Hiroshima. Were you scared to expose all of that? Yes. <laughs> I don't scare the darkness. I can go out at midnight alone everywhere, but now I'm somehow I'm scared in the darkness alone. And I think that experience in that, that, that half year has uh, caused the, this problem. Once you came here, what was your life like in the UK? 
at the beginning, I thought, well, and I will be welcomed as a hero because what, what happened to me, what I have done. Then at the history airport, I claimed asylum and then uh, they sent me to a, uh, North London. Despite my hard evidence, it took uh, two years for Home Office to grant my application. And during that two years, life was being really hard uh, to survive. So I applied as bus driver and I drove bus for seven years because you don't ask for your CV. And uh, people asking, do you think all this you are suffering is, is deserved or uh, you don't regret? And they said, well, this is the price you pay if you're standing up such gigantic country. Yes, I guess this is uh, what I have to cope with. Do you miss China? I miss China. China is a great country. However, it is this country just having its very terrible bad time now by uh, controlled by the com uh, Chinese Communist Party. It is a beautiful country. I started the campaign in this organ against organ harvesting in 2009. Now it's more than 10 years. The hard part I see is the people, they refuse to believe it. Did you realize the consequences of what you were doing? Did you realize that you will never be able to go back to China? I knew that uh, when that um, aircraft was taken off from Urumqi airport, I was crying. Looking at this ground, I said, okay, bye-bye, that's it. But in my opinion, it, it is a real North Korea then. And they asked us to go down in a basement in one of these old houses, which were about to collapse. I was like waiting for the, the sound of a gun having, you know, loading it and then well, lights out. <laughs> 